Oh, yeah, I'm going to be tripping. <laughs> I'm going to be all over dancing. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of that's going on. Okay, let's pray right now. We're going to pray this prayer. We're going to do Ephesians 1. 17, so that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom, which we know, which we know, and today we're going to learn this. It's hearing from God. And we know we have it. Every born a Christian, every born again Christian has it. It's, we got to bring it out. So when we pray this prayer and it says, may he give you the spirit of wisdom, you may be a born again Christian, but you've got to get that wisdom. So you've got to be able to hear from God. So that's why when we pray this prayer for people that they need to get the wisdom or to be enlightened, that you may know, know what's the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance among the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he performed in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also that which is to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and made him head over all things for the church which is his body, which is us, the fullness of him who filled all things in all ways. Now, Father God, we just praise and thank you today, Father God, that we get to come today, Father God. We get to bring our tithes and offerings to you, Father God, because we love you and we want to further your kingdom, Father God. And we also pray today, Lord, so through Barry Bennett, and he is going to talk to us about hearing from God, that, Father God, each and every one of us in this room, we get that nugget from you, Father God. We hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can all be seated. And we can start that video now, please. I want to let you know that we've started an endowment fund for scholarships at Karis Bible College. This is something we've wanted to do for a long time. We finally got it going. And if you would like a way to give back and help other people receive the same truths that have touched your lives, we would like to encourage you to be a part of it. Your, your gift will not only touch the students, but then as the students go out and start churches and ministries and travel around the world, you will be a part of everything that's happening. If you'd like more information about that, you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111 or you can go to charisbiblecollege.org for more information. Well, thank you very much. Good morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I've seen a lot of you uh, at Wendy's. Burger King, <laughs> and at the lodge where I'm staying. So, <laughs> welcome to all my new friends and uh, all the people that are watching online. Praise God, it's beautiful here. Wish you were here. If you're not, you should be. Amen. I want to uh, introduce, where are you? My wife, my beautiful wife, Betty Kay. She's in the front row here. And I want to say hi to any of my kids or grandkids that might be watching. What's up? Amen. <laughs> All right. Praise God. I, I uh, enjoy this so much, uh, getting the, the opportunity, the privilege to speak at the Summer Family Bible Conference, because each year it reminds me of how good God is. Because Thursday, last Thursday, was, was our ninth year anniversary of when we rolled into town with nothing but a word from God. And so every time, every year I get to share at this conference, it's just amazing to me what God has done. I want to thank Andrew and, and Gary Lukey and, and uh, Greg Moore and all of those that uh, have helped me on my way. Uh, it's just a, a tremendous blessing to be here and to, to share with you all and, and, and just look at this. I mean, wow, God is so good. And, and all of you here, this is what a blessing this is. So I think we're in for a real treat this week. How many of you agree with that? Amen. Amen. Praise God. 
I want to talk to you this morning uh, from, actually from the book that uh, Ashley just mentioned, Hearing God. And I want to kind of develop that. I'm going to draw some things from the book and I'm going to add some other things to it. But this is just a message that's been in my heart for quite some time. And I really believe with all my heart that one of the, the greatest, I'll put this in two different ways, one of the greatest keys to successful Christian living is hearing God. And one of the greatest needs in the body of Christ is hearing God. And I find that many times we are lacking in our abundant life that we so uh, quickly quote, he came to give us life and life more abundantly, amen. But many times we're not living that abundant life. And I think over the years I've kind of narrowed it down to why we don't often experience the abundant life. And in my experience, my opinion in this would be that we're not hearing God enough. And so I want to talk to you about that this morning. We've been called into a relationship. And a relationship, by definition, is going to include communication. Amen? And so hearing God is going to be the key to everything that we do. And I'm going to develop this with you uh, over the next few minutes. But uh, Ashley mentioned that when I first started working for the ministry, I was working uh, in the correspondence department answering emails and letters and difficult questions and what have you, and did that for two and a half years, I think. And I continue to do that, though not in an official capacity, but I still get letters from around the world every day. And I try to do the best I can in keeping up with that and helping people and answering their questions. But so often the questions are, I've done this, I've tried this, I've done what Andrew says, I've done what you say, it's not working, what now? Or what do I do about this? Or what do I do about that? Or how do I get this to happen in my life? Or how do I get that to happen in my life? And I get these kinds of questions a lot. Anybody ever had those questions? All right. And I find that my answer more and more is getting extremely simple. You need a word from God. And people don't like to hear that because what they want is a formula. They want something very quick and very easy, just do this, step one, two, three, presto, you're on your way. And sometimes that might work, but what I'm realizing over many decades of ministry is that we need a word from God. And to get a word from God, first you have to believe you can hear God. Were you created to hear God? It's not a trick question, the answer is yes. You were created to hear God. You were created to receive from the Spirit of God all that He has for you and all that He wants for you. You're created to be a receiver of the revelation knowledge of God. I find that in, uh, in our walk with God, sometimes we tend to get very doctrinal and doctrine is super important. We teach a lot of doctrine here at school and I, I'm one of the people that does that quite a bit. Doctrine will give you a foundation. Then we have issues in, in terms of wisdom and people look for counseling, they look for wisdom, they look for mentoring, what have you. And wisdom will give you an orientation and wisdom is extremely important. And then we can move over and we can begin to talk about vision What's God's purpose for your life? What is his vision for your life? What is your vision? How, where do you see yourself in five years? And vision will sow expectation. So we have doctrine that will sow a foundation in your life. We have wisdom that will sow an orientation in your life. And we have vision that will sow an expectation in your life. And yet there's still something missing. Because what is it that gives us faith? Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And when I, when I began to, to see this and, and see it more uh, defined in my own life and in my own walk with God, I realized that for all the doctrine that I have, which is hugely important, it doesn't birth faith necessarily in me. For all the, the wisdom perhaps that I've gained over the years, hugely important but maybe it's not always birthing faith in me. It's, it's understanding, it's, it's knowledge put to work, it's good, but perhaps it's not birthing faith in me. For the vision that God has put in me for my life, and I, just, just hear me in a generic sense here, we can split hairs, but just try to get the, grasp what I'm saying. 
Vision perhaps can, can motivate me in the realm of faith, yes, but in terms of walking out my day-to-day life, I need to hear from God. And only faith comes by hearing. Only faith comes by hearing, or faith, I should say it differently. Faith only comes by hearing. So how can we get ourselves into a place to hear God? Why do we need to hear God and why aren't we hearing God? Let's go to Acts 22. I want to show you an example of this. Acts 22. I think the first hump that people have to get over is is just even believing they can hear from God. Acts 22, 17 and 18. I'm just going to jump right into this. It says, and it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, this is Paul rehearsing his story, his testimony. When I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. And I saw him saying unto, unto me, him being Jesus, make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. Now I teach this a little bit in second year and I talk about the, the, the power of prayer in the book of Acts. But I I thought about this and I thought, here's Paul who has pretty good doctrine, a lot of wisdom, has a vision from God for his life, and he's in the temple praying. And he receives a word from God or receives a vision, but there's a communication from the spirit of God to his spirit that says, and it's not, it doesn't say anything about doctrine, doesn't say anything about wisdom, doesn't say anything about long-term vision. What does it say? What does the word from God say? Get out of Jerusalem, get out of Dodge, get out now. And I thought, wow, now that's a word from God that you're not going to get from believing correctly. You might not even get it from having all of your wisdom in place. You might not get it from working on your long-term five-year goals. That was a word from God that he got because he was in a place of prayer and God needed to communicate with him right now to get out. And I thought, man, what if he had decided to not go to prayer that day? What if he had decided to go to Starbucks? <laughs> and, you know, and he may have gotten the same communication at Starbucks, I don't know, but he got it in prayer because he had created an environment in his life to hear God. And something that was immediate, something that was urgent, something that was necessary, something that was needed, he received in a place of prayer a word from God. How many of you would like to have a word like that where it would tell you, don't get on that airplane, don't go here, don't go there. I think Andrew has a testimony, an airplane testimony. And you, you're in a place of where you can receive from God. In 1 uh, Kings 17, the story, that, where the, the story of Elijah begins, he stands before King Ahab, and I think Andrew was mentioning this last night. He stands before King Ahab, and after he gives this proclamation that it's not going to rain except by my word, And then the Lord gives him some instructions. And it says, and he went and did according to the word of the Lord. I I heard someone teach this on TV back in the 70s, a long time ago. And it stuck with me. He said, that's what I want engraved on my tombstone. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. How many of us in our walk with God is it so crucial that we hear from God, that we really are paralyzed unless we hear from God. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. It says in John, moving forward to Jesus, John 8, 38 says, I speak what I have seen with my father. I speak what I have seen with my father. We have other verses similar to that, where we can understand and glean that Jesus only ministered only spoke and only did what he received in communion with the Father. He was working 24-7 off of the word of the Lord that came to him. I like to speculate a little bit, and perhaps in those times when Jesus spent the whole night in prayer, perhaps he was receiving a vision or the instructions for the next day's ministry. Perhaps he was seen as he prayed all night, oh, far out, tomorrow I'm going to feed thousands with five loaves and two fishes. Perhaps he saw multitudes are gonna come to me and get healed. I mean, Jesus was continually walking in faith. Where did the faith come from? Faith comes by? And Jesus says, "I I can't do anything except I hear. Well, if Jesus had to live that way, perhaps we do too. 
Perhaps we do too. Perhaps we're not experiencing everything that we would like to experience because we're not hearing what we need to hear. Now, God is always speaking. This is, this is the, the thing. God is always speaking, but we're not always listening. Or let me put it this way. We're not always hearing what he's speaking. And it's like a radio, if you remember radios from the old days that had dials on them and such, and you tune them in, and uh, before they were digital, digital di- before they became digital, <laughs> they, they, uh, you'd have to turn the dial, and, you, and some of you remember this, and you would have, if it was a faraway station, you'd really have to, uh, there's a difference between right here and right here. Okay, you're following me. And you're getting tuned in to the station you want. The station's going, it's on. God is on. Everything about God is on. His word is alive and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. All of his promises are yes and amen. The word of God is alive. God is speaking continually. His word is in the environment. It's in the atmosphere. It's in the spirit. But we're not listening or we're not hearing. Go with me, if you will, to Matthew 13. Matthew 13, verse 15. And Jesus is speaking of the Jews, but I think it it, uh, probably can refer to more than just the Jews. He says, for this people's heart is waxed gross, or in other words, has grown thick. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted, and I should do what? I should heal them. So I'm going to spread that out a little bit and say, he could minister whatever they need to them if they would open their eyes and open their ears and understand with their heart. Or in other words, the reason we are suffering, folks, if you're suffering chronically, the reason is you're not hearing God. And so when people write in and they say, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? Really, the only answer I I can give now, if it's a doctrinal question, I can help you with doctrine. If it's a wisdom question, perhaps I can help a little bit there. But if it's what do I do kind of a question, you need a word from God. You need to hear God. And I know that puts us off. It's like, well, that, you know, what do you you think? You think I just hear from God? Well, you're supposed to hear from God. I'm supposed to hear from God. And I tell you what, the times that I've heard from God, life is sweet. Because what comes by hearing? Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Praise God. So what keeps us from hearing? What keeps us from hearing God? Well, Jesus refers to a little bit in the parable of the sower when he talks about the the seed that sprung up quickly and then got choked by the cares of this world. And you know what happens, folks? And I'm just like you. We get our eyes off of the Lord and we get our eyes onto circumstances. We get our eyes on the news. We get our eyes on the political issues of the day. We get our eyes on the terrorism of the day. We get our eyes on all kinds of different things on our bank accounts, on our health. We get our eyes on things. We get our eyes on the natural and our spirit begins to grow dull to the, to the spiritual. We're, not, we're no longer sensitive And so we're no longer receiving this continual communion from his spirit to our spirit, which produces, I'm going to keep asking this question, produces faith, right? And we grow dull. And Jesus said, these people, they've closed their eyes. Their ears have grown dull. Their hearts are hardened. Because if they would only open their eyes and hear with their ears, I would heal them. Is anybody with me this morning? All right. I want to hear God. I've heard God, but I want to hear God more often. I want to get to the place where I'm only doing, I'm going to go according and do according to the word of the Lord, like Elijah. Or only I'm I'm going to walk in that which I'm receiving from the Lord on a continual basis. I mean, I think this should be our goal. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, now this will be New King James this time. It's funny when I write, I I quote New King James. When I read, I read King James. So you just have to deal with that. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 and 12. 
Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. We have received the spirit which is from God that we what? Might know. Now when I talk about hearing God, let's, let's give some other phrases to it, some other terms to it so that we're all together on this. We can call it hearing God, or I like to call it revelation knowledge. We can call it divine inspiration. When the spirit quickens your spirit, we can call it any number of things, but I hope you're, you're getting what I'm saying here. That there's a communication from the spirit of God to our spirit, it's in there, but we get so focused on natural things that we, we tend to close it off. And the spirit of God is saying, let me out, let me out. I have some things to share with you. And he says that we might know the things which are freely given to us by God. You're not going to know the true nature of God unless you're in communion with the Holy Spirit. You can know it doctrinally, but that won't change your life. You're not going to know the true nature of who you are without communion with the Holy Spirit. You're not going to know where you're seated. You're not going to know your authority. You're not going to know what your purpose is. You're not going to know basically anything other than doctrine. Folks, have we become so enamored with doctrine that we've forgotten relationship? And I'm a doctrine guy, so there's a balance here. And I'm gonna, I'll refer back to that in a few minutes, but relationship is what we need to be about. And hearing from God on a continual basis. It's going to, the Spirit of God is going to reveal to you the peace of God. The Spirit of God is going to reveal to you the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. The Spirit of God is going to reveal to you all manner of things of who you are, who he is, what your purpose is, and what the inheritance that you have in the Lord is. The Spirit of God is wanting to reveal this to you, but we'll go on and read a little bit further. It says in uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14, <coughs> excuse me, 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So I'm going to suggest something to you. If you're born again, you're not a natural man, but you might be living like one. And if you're living like a natural man, you're going to get natural man results. And the Spirit is trying, trying, trying to get in and to reveal things to you and to speak and to to show you the nature of God and to show you who you are, to show you that you're more than a conqueror, that you can do all things through Christ. The, the Spirit of God is speaking to you about how you've been accepted in the beloved and how you're loved, how you're forgiven. There's no guilt, there's no condemnation. The Spirit of God is pounding on you, trying to get in to show you these things because when these things are quickened to you, faith will be born and you'll begin to walk in the overcoming victorious life that you were created to walk in. Amen. But if you're living on the natural level, though you be born again, then you're going to miss out on all of this because you're not hearing. And then you're gonna write letters and say, how, tell me, please, what do I do? You need a word from God. You need a word from God. I'm cutting down on a lot of correspondence today. This is, <laughs> amen. It says in Isaiah 55, three, incline your ear and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. There's so many verses like that throughout scripture. Incline your ear and come to me and hear and your soul shall live. Doesn't God want us to have a prosperous soul? Amen? Third John two? Why, how? Hearing, hearing is the key to everything. This is one of my favorite verses, Romans eight sixteen. Romans 8, 16 says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. And it goes on to say that we are children of God. But I'm going to suggest that you could plug anything into there. The spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are, fill in the blank, seated with him in heavenly places. The spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are more than conquerors. The spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are healed. The spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we have more than enough. The spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. And you fill it in, whatever you can find in the covenant in your inheritance in Christ, let the spirit of God bear witness with your spirit. Let it be quickened to your spirit and it'll be yours like never before. And what comes by hearing? Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. 
I want to share some, a few, few stories with you here from Scripture. Blind Bartimaeus, how many are familiar with Blind Bartimaeus? All right. Blind Bartimaeus cried out on the road as he heard the entourage and Jesus and the multitudes coming down the road. And he said, you don't have to look there, but it's in Mark 10. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the people told him to shut up. And then he says, he cried all the more. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped. And he called him over. And I, I do this in more depth than other, other teachings. But Bartimaeus ran over. And Jesus said, what do you want for me to do? Or that doesn't sound right. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? How many of you would like to have Jesus ask you that question? <laughs> Amen. What prompted Bartimaeus to cry out? Now, I have a point in this. I'm going to give you four or five examples here. What prompted Bartimaeus to cry out and then to end up face to face with Jesus and Jesus asked him, what do you want? He says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Where did he get a revelation of the identity of Jesus. Son of David means Messiah. Messiah means he who comes to heal and to deliver. How did Bartimaeus know the guy that he can't even see, that he's only heard about, then he hears the crowd going by, how did he know? So hold that thought a second. Think about the guys that had the, the paralytic, the four guys with the paralytic. And they come to the house and the house is surrounded and they can't get in. And they press through the crowd somehow. They get to the steps going up to the roof of the house. They carry the guy up. I mean, this is quite an ordeal, I can imagine. And they pull the tiles off the roof and let him down through the center of the hole they've made into the right plop in front of Jesus. And it says, and Jesus, seeing their what? Faith. Seeing their faith. Let's think about the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood was unclean, should not be in public, certainly should not be touching men, came through the throng behind him and said to herself, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. And she touched the hem of his garment. She didn't face him. There's a lot of interesting layers and dimensions to this because as an unclean woman, he wouldn't be able to minister to her. So she touched the hem of his garment. She didn't touch him. And he says, after this transaction of faith and healing, he says, your, what? Faith made you whole. Let's think about the two blind guys in Matthew 10. I think, no, Matthew 9. And they also call out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And he says to them, I'm condensing this, let it be done unto you according to your faith. So we have Oh, I can think of another one, the centurion. The centurion says, you don't even need to come to my house. Just speak the word. And Jesus, I'm jumping ahead. Jesus says, never have I seen such faith in all of Israel. We can talk about the Syrophoenician woman who came, a Gentile that's not part of the covenant. And Jesus refers to her as a dog, a Gentile woman. And she comes back with, yes, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. And Jesus used an interesting word in the Greek here. He says, oh woman, mega is your faith. The Greek word mega, I thought, wow. Mega faith of uh, uh, this woman. Now, I've given you, I forget how many examples here. Each one of them mentions faith. These are not doctrinal issues. These are not wisdom issues. These are not five years down the road goal setting issues. These are right now, I hurt, I need help issues. And in each case, Jesus said they had what? Faith. Where did it come from? Faith comes by hearing. And so at some point, and this is where for me it gets really interesting. At some point in time, these people, the Spirit of God quickened to them something about Jesus, his name, son of David, his identity, or his, the power of his presence with the paralytic coming down. They had faith in the power of his presence 
or it could be faith in the anointing of his clothing, or it could be faith in his mercy. But somehow, some way, faith came into these people and it only can come by hearing. So I have to conclude that these people that demonstrated great faith heard God. And then I look at their lives and I look at who they are. And as, as we say in Spanish, these are people comuni corriente. This is just, these are just people. They're, just, they're not philosophers, they're not theologians, they're not Pharisees, they're not religious leaders. They're just people. And they're not looking for doctrine and they're not looking for wisdom, they're looking for help. And this, this is encouraging to me because they somehow received a quickening from the Spirit of God which produced in them faith to go and get what they needed from God. Amen. Which reveals to you the nature of God that he's always yes and amen, and reveals to you that faith can happen in anybody. All you need is to have the Spirit of God speak to your spirit. Does anybody get ministered to by that? You don't need to go to Bible college, though I would highly suggest it. But you don't need to go to Bible college to hear God. When something gets quickened to your spirit, now I'm teaching some of this is coming from my book this morning and I have a number of stories in there and one of the stories that really, really impacted my life was what at the end of our time in Chile, in, in 2001 we had been 12 years on the mission field and pastoring for eight of those years and the Lord is calling us back to Texas and there's Texas again, anyway. Uh, <laughs> And so we were giving away or selling everything we had. We were going to leave the country much like we arrived with two suitcases each. And, and so I had this car that the Lord had provided some years before, three or four years before. And this, this car, I had had it for sale for a month. And it was a nice car. It was a few years old, but it was well kept. Take care of my things. And no one was interested in my car. And I was really shocked. And so one morning, and it's like a Thursday, and we're leaving on Saturday... And I'm sitting in my living room, reading my Bible, praying. And I'm reading and I come into Romans 4 and I come to where it says, God who calls, calls things that are not as though they were. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and says, that's how I do it. And I'm not making this up. This was my response. Yes, I know I teach that. <laughs> that was the first thing that came to me. Yeah, I got it, God. And then I realized, wait a minute, I just heard from God. And I'm not making this up either. I jumped up out of my chair and I said, I call this car sold today. Now, I could have done that out of my own flesh trying to make something work, but the spirit quickened something to my spirit so that when I jumped up and said it, there was power in those words because a spiritual transaction had taken place. I had heard from God. Now, I don't have time for the whole story, but I'm not, and I'm not making any of this up. Within two hours, literally two hours of when I made that declaration, I was downtown and a man saw the car, called me, long, long deal here, but banking, notarization, change of money, the whole thing, agreed to my price. Within two hours of that declaration, I was emptying my personal possessions into a plastic bag and handing him the keys. Yeah. Because I heard God and I thought, this is neat. <laughs> when you hear God, good things happen. And I began to rehearse other stories in my life. I mean, my son, the miracle birth of my son who was declared dead in the womb. But the Spirit of God came into my spirit at that instant when the doctor spoke and said to me, no. That's all. And I just, no, I don't, I don't receive it. I heard you with my head, but my spirit just said no. And my son was born completely healthy. And I, I could go on story after story after story, and you have your stories too. And what, what I'm seeing, I mean, the fact that I'm here at this Bible conference, the fact that I'm speaking, to me, it still blows my mind. Because we came here in April of 2007 to take a tour of the campus at Elkton at the time. 
And uh, Donna Priest, who's here somewhere or was, uh, was there at the front desk and took us on this tour. And we went the back way through Elkton, if you're familiar with that building, and came up through the school on the other side and came to the auditorium and there was a guest speaker there. And as I looked through the window of the auditorium and I see the students sitting there, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, one day you will teach here. And I thought, I'm working in a warehouse in Dallas, Texas, eight to 10 hours a day, and I have a nighttime Spanish Bible college, and I, didn't, I, I, did not, that, I could not process that word. And today, I teach 16 courses, because, because I had a word from God. And I could talk about healing. I got healed of hepatitis by a word from God. And we could talk about thing after thing after thing because we got a word from God. And so it takes me a while to catch up here, but I think I'm figuring this out. <laughs> that the more you hear from God, the better life is and the more victories, and the more health, and the more healing, you need to hear from God. I need to hear from God. And we, we, we make it so complicated, or we think we're not created. Folks, every single one of you was created to hear. It comes as part of the package. It's the basic model. The hearing part of, of, of the human is inside of all of us. We can hear God. But if we let the things of the world choke it out, the cares of this world and all of the stuff and the lust of the flesh and there are so many things that want to keep you from hearing God. And the more you can be kept from hearing God, the less you will live of the life God has for you. You need to hear from God. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, share with you how, all right? So let's, let's talk about how we hear from God a little bit. Jesus said, in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. How many sheep we have in here today? Jesus' sheep, amen? Well, he says, my sheep hear my voice. Have you ever, I, I read this example, it's not original with me, but I like it, that a fellow was at a park many years ago with his dog, and it was a, like, we'll say like a 4th of July kind of an atmosphere, lots of people in the park, and his dog had run off. And so, in the midst of hundreds, perhaps thousands of voices, he called out to his dog, We'll call the dog Sparky, okay, Sparky. And the dog could hear his owner's voice from yards and yards and yards away with many, many people in between and hearing many other voices, the dog could hear his owner's voice and found the owner. How many have seen March of the Penguins? It's a few years old now, that movie. And all these gazillions of penguins and they all look exactly alike. And they all sound to my ear exactly alike, but the mates can find each other. I said, I don't know. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. It's in you. And for perhaps for some of you, it's waiting to be kicked into gear. Are you even expecting to hear God? Are you even expecting to have something quickened to your spirit? Is that even on, on your radar that God could be giving you instructions daily? God could be revealing things to you daily. It could be something doctrinal. It could be something of wisdom. Or it could be get up and get out of town. You're in danger. Those are the kinds of words I think we want to be aware of. We can hear God. Number one, if you're taking notes, I'm going to share with you how to I always hate to break things into points here because then people begin to make them into formulas, but uh, hear my heart, I'm not trying to create a formula, but I'm trying to help you create an environment to hear God. Number one, stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. It says in Jeremiah 15, 16, your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Stay in the Word, stay in the Word, read the Word, meditate in the Word. Find the promises of God. Read, read, read. I mean, here's Andrew reading Ezekiel on Sunday. And yet he was getting blessed. Stay in the word. There's a verse that says uh, in Isaiah 66 too. But on this one will I look. On him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. 
And I thought, wow, I don't know if this is true for any of you, but when I open my Bible, and again, this is true, I am not making this up. When I open my Bible, there's a little shudder that goes through me. It's like an excitement of what am I going to get this time? It's like kind of when someone offers me a slice of chocolate pie, that same feeling. <laughs> I'm going to get something from this. Does anybody, anybody bear witness with that? When I open the Word of God, it's like, there's a little, whew, I know I'm going to get blessed again. I can't help it every time I open it up. Something new or something is reminded to me. So stay in the word. Let God's word excite you. Number two, abide in him. I know we hear that all the time. It says in John 15, 4 and 5, Abide in me and I in you, and the branch, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Well, this abiding is what I'm talking about this morning. This is communion. This is communication. This is your spirit being quickened. This is revelation knowledge. This is hearing God, abiding in him. That's where the fruit comes from. If you're living a fruitless life, it's because you're not hearing God. So abide in him. So what does that mean? Well, live a life of praise. Live a life of thanksgiving. Well, brother, if you knew my life, there's nothing to give thanks about. See, that's why you're not hearing God. Start thanking God for everything that you have, for every blessing, for the breath that you breathe, for the food that you eat, for every, every piece of clothing you have, for every dollar you have. Thank God, praise God, stay in an attitude of praise and thanksgiving, rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice, abide in him, abide in him. Let his word excite you and abide in him. Number three, think God's thoughts. Think God's thoughts. It's going to be hard to hear the voice of God if you're not thinking the thoughts of God. If you're thinking misery and suffering and pain and defeat and lack and poverty and failure, if that's, if that's the way you're thinking, it's going to be really hard to hear from God because that's not what God's thinking. Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report. If there is any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. Think God's thoughts. Or in other words, create an environment in your life in which God can get through. Now you know, I have one more, but... Here, here's something that I'll, I'll just throw it out there and you try it on and if you like it, keep it. But many times I'll go to bed in unbelief and I'll wake up in faith. And I thought, how can that be? And I finally realized that God doesn't go to bed. He's still speaking. And things that seem like mountains to me when I went to bed look like molehills when I wake up and I realize if faith has been born in my heart, then I heard from God. And he did it while I was sleeping because that's the only time he can get a word in edgewise. <laughs> if faith gets birthed in your heart and all of a sudden something that seemed impossible and full of distractions and full of impossibilities and full of this and full of that, and then all of a sudden one day all, you, you think, I can do this. You heard from God. And you say, well, I don't know when I heard from God. Well, he got it in there somehow. Because his word is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. You, he got it in there somehow. And faith was born in your heart. He's always talking. And if we were just always trying to create the environment to hear, man, how much better off would we be? Now, the other night, the Lord woke my wife up in the middle of the night. And in the next morning, she told me what he said, or what she thought he said. And what she thought she heard from the Lord was, I want you to buy a juicer. <laughs> and so I said, hon, God bless you. But I think what he actually said was, I love the Jews.
But what she heard, I mean, she processed it through all her feminine stuff, you know. So what she got out of that was, instead of I love the Jews, was go buy a juicer. (laughs) Honest mistake. (laughs) We now have a juicer. (laughs) (laughs) But here's, let me, I, I, I need to share this in the last few minutes that I have that when you get a word from God, sometimes it's not always the full-blown, hundred-fold harvest, every detail explained word. Sometimes it's a seed. Sometimes it's the beginning of something. Something has been conceived in you. And faith has come, but many times a word from God, not every time, the get up and get out of town word is a right now word, full harvest. But sometimes what you get from God is the beginnings of something he wants to show you. And you need to get counsel, I would suggest, excuse me. You need to get with somebody, you need to make sure, check it with doctrine. Remember I started off with this, check it with doctrine. Is Is this good doctrine, what you think you've heard? Check it with wisdom, check it with people that have gone this way before and get their advice. Don't just automatically assume that the word you got was the word and and no one can speak into your life about it. We hear this all the time and we call it playing the God card. Well, God told me. Well, I'm not doubting that you've had something birthed in you, but give it a chance to mature. Give it a chance to grow. Give it a chance to develop. Give it a chance to have other input from, from wise spiritual leaders so that when it finally reaches full hundredfold, a place of a hundredfold harvest, you're ready to walk in it. Not every word is coming completely wrapped with a bow and totally ready to go. Some of them are just seeds. Back in 1978, right after we got married, I thought I heard the Lord say, go to Mexico and be missionaries. Looking back, I realized he only cleared his throat <clears throat> and there goes Barry. <laughs> and he leans over to Jesus and says, where's he going? <laughs> Go find him in Mexico and talk to him now. <laughs> so you need to submit these words. Now, what I didn't realize is that God had birthed something in my heart when I heard that. But it was 11 years before it came to harvest. And I'm not saying every, every word from God is an 11 year process. I'm not suggesting that at all. But some words are a process and some words are right now. But here's the thing, we need to be sensitive to the spirit of God and know that God is wanting to speak to us. God is speaking to us. Did you know right now in this room, God is speaking to you right now. God is wanting to reveal things to you. God is trying to quicken something to you. God is trying to reveal who he is to you, how much he loves you. God is trying to to give you a word to believe for your healing. God is wanting to quicken you right now. God is active and speaking. His word is alive right now. Can anybody believe that, that right now, Every promise of God is alive. Every word of God is alive. And all you need to do is just tune a little bit more to get to the right frequency to hear God. And what comes by hearing? Faith comes by hearing. I I promised you one more, and I think I've already talked about it. Understand that God's word may often come in seed form. And folks, once once you start getting this and start hearing from God, all the other voices start to lose their importance in your life. Once you know that God is speaking to you, and once you begin to get a testimony of this, then you realize that voice doesn't interest me anymore, that voice doesn't interest me anymore, natural things don't interest me anymore, because I've realized I can hear God. I can hear God. And that's where life really begins to get exciting. Amen? Amen. Can I pray for you? Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, in this week, I believe many, many, many of your sheep, of your children in this room are going to hear your voice. 
Some of them are going to hear a full-blown word. Some of them are going to have a seed of revelation, a conception of something new. All of us are prepared, Father. I'm going to speak in faith that we are prepared to hear you. Give us direction. Bring us into a place of healing. Bring us into a place of victory. Bring us into a place of forgiveness. Bring us into a place of knowing your nature. Bring us into a place where faith is born because faith comes by hearing. And I'm speaking over this conference and over the people here, the speakers, and over this week that the word of God would find a place in every heart, that the spirit of God would quicken every spirit, that there would be revelation knowledge and that lives would be changed, transformed, and set on a new path because all of a sudden we've awakened to the fact that we are supposed to be hearing you. And Father, we call it, we receive it, we believe it, and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Expanding business. I know that was a lot to take in today. And if you want to, you can just go on YouTube and you can re-listen to this over again to get more revelation from it. But the biggest thing that I took from it was thinking we need to set the environment. We need to get that environment and we have to believe that God is always speaking to us. He's always trying to talk to us. He's always trying to get something to us. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about deer hunting, watching my boys. What is all the preparation that goes into deer hunting for men? You ever think about that? Oh my gosh, it's just huge what they prepare so that they can supposedly get that 30-pointer. But the point is, you look at it, they start out weeks in advance and they get their spot. And then what do they do? They got to get all their, their stuff prepared and then they're going to feed them. And my boys, they go to the feed mill and they get a special blend because their dad has taught them. You got to always have a better horse and pony show than the next guy. <laughs> well, that guy over here is feeding them deer. That guy's feeding them apples, but I'm going to go get the special blend. <laughs> And I'm going to dump it out there because they haven't seen that yet. <laughs> so then they go do all that, and then they get their, their, their stands ready. And they, Well, you got to get them out there early so they get used to seeing them because you just don't just put it out there because now they're going to think there's a problem. Somebody's looking for them. And then they get the clothes ready, and you make sure you get the scent out of them. You put them in boxes with pine boughs, or you spray them with something, because you sure don't want them smelling you when you get there. And then the big day of the hunt comes, and what do you do? You sneak out there with your gun in the dark, and you sit there, and you wait on them. Because you know why? Because you got the environment for them to come in now. And that's what God is telling us. You know, pastor can get up here and she can t tell all of us every day, guys, you're the righteousness of God. You're seated in heavenly places. But are you guys getting, are you guys getting revelation of it? Is the environment set that you really say, I know God is speaking to me. Just like the day when I was in the hospital when we went for Tom's cancer for leukemia. All of a sudden, I was sitting there and fear wanted to come in, but I got a word from God and he said, you say to him, he is not sick. I needed it just as much as he did at that point because it was all around me. Death was all around me. And I had to look at him and say to him, no, you are not sick. And I grabbed his arm and I said, now say it, say it. You are not sick. And he looked at me and he said, okay, okay, I'm not sick. <laughs> but I got a revelation from God and he was not sick and we were not going to receive that that day. And that's why God, it's so, you guys, it's so important for all of us, for all of us to read God's word to know what's in here, to really know what's in here and understand it. Because you know why, guys? A lot of times we can read this and we don't have a revelation of it. We don't really know what that word says. But when we don't know it, what do we have to do? We got to go search it out. We got to go find it out. We got to go ask God because He is going to tell us. We are going to get that answer because He is always speaking to us. 
And that is why so many times we got to speak the results in our lives and not get caught in the circumstances. Because that's what so many of us do, don't we? We get caught in the circumstances. And it's easy to get caught in the circumstances because that's all, we see them, we hear them, we feel them. But if we continue to speak the results, set the environment that God can speak to us, like Barry said, that's all we'll think about anymore. We won't think of anything else. We'll be constantly in that environment of thinking, God is going to talk to me. And we will believe that. Amen? Yeah. All right, ushers, you can bring in communion. But, you know, I, I also was thinking, too, about this when I was thinking about God always, you know, always speaking to us and always talking to us about things, is that when my dad got attacked by that bull, and my other sisters, they were all at the hospital that day when my dad, they were there when my dad came in. But on the way there, I just started talking to God about it. I asked him, God, is my dad going to be okay? And he did. Spirit to spirit, he gave me such a peace. And when I got in there, my sisters were all crying. Everybody was upset. And they kept saying to me, Didi, you don't understand. And I thought to myself, yes, I do understand. God is going to heal him. Whatever is going on here, it's going to be okay. And like Barry said, so many times, you guys, in our lives, it's just a seed. And we've always got to be patient and not run ahead of God because we all want to do that. And when Barry talked about God saying to Jesus, where is Barry going? That's Dee Dee a lot of times. Where is Dee Dee going? You know? And it's true because the patience is not there. And, and that's a huge thing for all of us, to have that patience to wait on God because he answers. Like, we've all been taught. That word never goes void. It never goes void. He will answer us. We just got to have the environment and be patient and wait on God. Amen? Yeah. Okay. Now, we all know this. We all know that this bread here brings us into remembrance of what Jesus did for us. He did everything for us. Everything. Thing. So anything that goes on in our lives, anything that we don't understand, Jesus did it for us. All we have to do is develop that faith to believe we are always hearing from him. Amen? Let's eat. And this right here is our guarantee. Because he shed his blood. And when he shed his blood for us, everything was finished. We don't ever have to wonder or be afraid or have to toil for anything. Because Jesus did it for us on the cross. Amen? Amen. Drink. Okay, let's pray. Oh, now, Father God, we just praise and thank you that, Lord, we know, every one of us in here today knows without a shadow of a doubt that we do hear your voice. And this week, Father God, we are going to do on purpose, on purpose at all times be looking to hear, to hear your, or not looking, but want it from spirit to spirit to hear your voice. And now because of what we heard today, we do get a deeper understanding, Father God, how to hear your voice. Now, Father God, we are all expecting that. We will all hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 You guys have a wonderful day.